Uh, my setup is pretty much a MacBook Pro, uh, like the standard uh, Intel Core Duo white one. I use um, uh, Digio 3 uh -huh. from uh, DigiDesign. Yeah. And then uh, on top of that, I have a Digimac Personas. Uh, should I forget the model number, but it's pr what it pretty much does, it expands the Digio 2's capabilities as far as inputs. Yes. So I get like 16 inputs. Um, I have some NS10 speakers for monitoring. I used to have a sub, but I got rid of it, and so I just do monitoring with that. And as far as preamps, I just use the personas and that. I have a bunch of microphones, like um, a bunch of condensers, KSM27s. I got like 357s. We just bought a kick mic, a Sennheiser uh, Beta 90-something. Uh, we just bought the little condensers for the toms, just like a bunch of random microphones, yeah, sure. a lot of pods, you know, we just bought the new Pod XT. Yeah, sure. It's just like the best way to record, you know, like just easy, simple. And then on top of that, we have like a, in the rehearsal spot, like a little in-ear setup because we're writing our new record right now. Oh, yeah. So instead of just rehearsing at full volume, we're just using our in-ears, just sending Pro Tools straight through with a click and with all the sequences. Right, cool. And we kind of like just jam it out, you know, and it's just really good for ear fatigue you know you can go like 10 hours and your ears are fine as opposed to rehearsing full volume yeah which you know how go how that goes i really enjoy them like i learned how to mix with them so i i mean there's a lot of people that do different things like a lot of people put tissues in the tweeters because they're like really hard on the ears but to tell the truth, I really love them. Like, I, I bought some really expensive Atoms, right. which were like $4,000 each. Whoa. And, I mean, I ended up selling them. Like, the NS10s were just, you know, they're they're not the best speakers in the world, but if you make it sound good on an NS10, it'll sound good anywhere. So that's why I kind of, like, stuck to them, you know? Yeah, sure. For this record, I'm actually trying to be more of a guitar player, you know, right. like, I mean, I, I'm not very good at playing guitar, like, I just play guitar live because that's, like, the, I mean, out of all the instruments that I kind of, like, dabble in, that's kind of, like, the one that I'm least worst at, you know, yeah. so I end up playing on stage guitar. So for this record, I'm trying to make it a lot more riff-oriented, like, instead of building a cool loop and a cool sound and then writing something on top of it, I'm just kind of, like, trying to write a like a kick-ass riff, you know, like a riff that people are like, fuck, that riff rules. Usually what I do is, like, um, I sync up Pro Tools and Reason, and then I kind of play, like, a, like a standard rock and roll beat on the drums, you know, I just program it, and I just start riffing on it, and then I basically build the, um, how would you call it, the schematics of a song you know like the, the the palette of a song like a verse a chorus a verse a chorus maybe a bridge just very simple you know like the idea that I have and then I bounce it I just give it to the guys and if they like it then we start the process of converting it into a song you know like we all go to the rehearsal spot play it around see if it feels good live see if Nathan you know it's like it's a democracy, our band, so like, you know, they have to be, everybody has to be happy with it, everybody has to feel inspired by it. So it's a tough process, you know, because a lot of the shit that I work on, I think is amazing, and then I show it to the guys, and they're like, eh. But at the end of the day, they're right, you know, if it's not good, it's good. You know, some of the other stuff that I bring to the table is, is good, and they like it. So then, you know, we start building, like, the real, that's when it really comes to life, you know, when he puts lyrics, and, you know, the bass player does his thing, and the drummer does his thing, that's when it really becomes Medina Lake.